Uh, hi everyone. Uh, hi dad. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to play today. Uh, you guys wouldn't know this, but I haven't played in many days because I've been, I, I, I built up a lot of footage as I got up to level nine. And so I've been, just been spending the last few days just editing video footage down and then putting it onto YouTube. And so I, I honestly don't remember where we're at. Um, <laughs> so uh, I know that we're in Sanctuary, but I'm actually not sure what we're doing. So I'm just going to pull up that to-do list that I had been making and we'll take a look at it together and see what we've got going on. Um, I'm really happy to get back to playing. So let's see if we can do this. So I don't know if you guys can even see the small list, um, but uh, mysterious bald scarred guy. That's the guy from the intro we're, we're looking for. He, he killed my wife and ha had my child kidnapped. Conquered, we actually should take off the list, but we know all about Conquered at this point. We know what's going on there. Let's take all of these safes and just put them in a big cluster at the top. Corvega, we don't know about. Vault, we don't know about. Diamond City, we're looking for a bright heart. That's what um, Mama Murphy told us when she had a vision about us. And then go back to the museum, get the dog, look in the toolbox, and then outside of the museum, get loot from the chest table thing. That, that's amazing. And that's clearly what we need to do this play session. So we're going to do it. Back to museum, get dog meat, look in the toolbox for all of our loot. Oh, and I didn't put this in the notes, but I remember that we have a set of power armor there because we now have two suits of power armor. One's kind of garbage and it doesn't have all the pieces, but at least we have them. So uh, let's, let's go do that stuff. Also, I apologize, you guys, if this doesn't sound good. I'm not sure if it will. I've flipped the mic to the other side and I've got a second screen that I'm going to be looking at as I play. So I'm not going to be looking directly at the camera. So hi, and now my attention is going this way. Um, but hopefully that doesn't matter to you. I'm just a tiny little box in the corner. We'll get the gameplay going and, uh, and hopefully that is really good. Let's see. Uh, okay, so we are here, and we have June walking by. We have Mama Murphy sitting in a chair in the rain. We've got a set of power armor. We've got Sturges there hammering away at the house. Um, I think Preston is on a patrol just walking around the town. And maybe... Yes, yes. So, uh, we have... Uh, Marcy. Give you the idea we're friends. Oh, I'll, I'll be sure I'm not your friend then. Um, we uh, we have Marcy taking care of the crops, which I really wanted to happen. In fact, now that she's here taking care of crops, before I go and get the power armor and all the good stuff, let's just take a look and see if she has enough crops. She doesn't. She's got five people, not enough water, not enough food. Well, happiness is going down. That's not good. Let's see what kind of food we have. If we can maybe get them some extra crops. We have one unit of corn. Tons of gourds. We'll take all the gourds. I mean, if I have nothing better. Tons of potatoes. I'd love to plant wild mute fruit, but it, it's it's not going to work that way unless you have a mod. Um, I need actual mute fruit, not the wild version. Uh, tab. There we go. Okay. All right. We have a little bit of stuff for Mama, or not for Mama Murphy, for Mar Marcy to work on. Let's just drop down as much as we can. Go into build mode. Okay, we're doing good. We have 12 food being produced now, way more than we have people in the place. So we're doing awesome for food. We have Marcy and Mama Murphy are now uh, harvesting all the food. Um, now, I think I have enough that I can do a uh, water filter at this point. 
So let's give them water too, and then I can go do my main mission. My screen shows that I have a bunch of water filtration systems already online, but it shows water three, like there's a problem. Each of these produces... Ten. I should have 23 units of water right now. I don't need to build anything. Why are you not working? What? Oh, for Pete's sake. You just needed me to reconnect the stupid wire? Ugh, so dumb. Okay. Fine. Alright, uh, 12 food, 23 water. That should overproduce everything, which I want. I'll take all the extra. 5 power. Defense is 15. Now, the defense of 15 is, is kind of a problem. And the reason it's a problem is... The game says you want to have at least as much defense as your food and water combined. I think the idea is the more like food and resources that you have, the more likely that raiders will come get it. And in order to keep them at bay, you have an equivalent amount of firepower. Um, and again, I've mentioned this before, but only up to 150. Why up to 150? Apparently, uh, someone looked into the game's code files and, or the, the scripting files that are available uh, in the directory where your Fallout is stored. And apparently, uh, they cap you at 150. Like, they don't care about anything over 150. But there is a trick to that. Um, the, when the game is running the math on whether raiders are going to come hit your settlement, it doesn't care about anything over 150 in terms of turrets or defense. Um, so if you have 250 defense, it's the same as having 150 defense. It never goes better than 150, at least for their calculations about whether a raider will attack or not. However, if the raiders do attack, obviously having extra firepower means you'll gun them down more quickly. So you may still want to go up to 250, 300, 500 defense if you're feeling like you absolutely just want to massacre anybody who comes near your settlement. But in terms of whether you'll get raided or not, nothing over 150 matters. Um, the script engine just ignores anything over that. Um, or at least it does with the current build I'm on. Uh, you know, it, there is a rumor that there's going to be a new version of Fallout 4 that will be updated for modern engines. And who knows what they'll do with that. I mean, if they if they wanted to go nuts with that thing and, and up, up everything and make everything bigger and better, then I guess they could. Um, okay. So... Food and water, I gotta get defense up to, let's see here, 35 would match my food and water total, which means I need 20 more defense. I do like the good machine gun turrets. Uh, there is someone um, on Reddit, I think, that um, mathed out all the different guns, the missiles, the lasers, the machine guns, and so on. And according to that person, um, the heavy machine gun turret is pretty much optimized. You don't need anything better. Uh, you can get better, of course. You absolutely could get better. Um, but apparently, they're not a good value for the investment, and they, don't, they do marginally better, whereas the machine gun turrets are pretty great. Um, so, let's see, you know what, I might take you and just put you up on a roof as well. Can I get you up there? Is that, oh no, I don't want you pointing at me, point at the bad guys. Does that work? Yeah, that's good. Maybe I'll put another one there? No, I'll put some down here. I think that turret can defend that area. So, let's see if we can get a turrets to defend the bridge. Oh, I have a turret defending the bridge. 
That's so nice. Um, I'll give it another one, though. Let's get the defense up a little bit. Oh, I can't. I maxed out. I maxed out. I forgot. I'm still low level. <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, what I got is what I got. Okay. Um, I just started creating stuff willy-nilly because I... My my brain is like, you're level 140, because that was my last playthrough. But no, you're level 9, and you are out of stuff. Okay. We're going to go into Conquer and get our dog back. Oh, and we're going to eat and drink, too. Do I have anything hot... hot keyed for food? Oh, I drank my last water. Shoot. That could be a problem. I'm sorry. I, I I wouldn't be very good company right now. Oh man. There's no water in my inventory because those water filters were offline for some mean reason. Oh! But I have stored up extra water. I'll take it all. You Thank you. To do some work? Uh, yeah, what do you need? What kind of help do you need? Well, for starters, we could use some real beds. We've been sleeping on the ground for too long. Um, why do you need my help to build beds? Look, we got a lot on our plate, and we've been on the run for weeks. We need food, water, shelter, you name it. Well, you asked how you could help. I told you. Did you mean it or not? That's so funny, because the way they write that, it tricks you into thinking, like, you did ask for help, but you actually didn't. He comes up to you and says, do you want to do some work? But in any case, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll do I'd it. I'd be glad to help. Okay. Good deal. Just make sure we can sleep with a roof over our heads. Some of these old houses still look solid enough to do the trick. There's a workbench over there you can use. Give me a holler if you need anything. Well, look at that. We completed the job. Talk to Sturgis. Sturgis. I like it. Having a place to sleep will improve everyone's spirits. What we need now is a reliable source of clean water. What do you mean? Like a well. Then we don't have to keep drinking the river water. That stuff's not good for you. <laughs> I think it's supposed to give me a mission. But it's not. I can never tell. Sometimes when this happens and you don't get the mission or the quest that just got assigned to you, uh, sometimes what that means is there isn't really a quest to assign to you. Other times it means the engine hasn't gone through one of its cycles where it starts to, to process all the info. Um, I don't know what's happening here, but we're just going to go talk to him again anyway, as if we did get the quest. Sturgis. I feel better already, knowing we have a reliable supply of clean water. I hope you don't mind me asking for some more help, but our food supplies are running low. If we're gonna settle here, we'll need to get some crops established. What kind of crops are you looking for? Well, it doesn't much matter. Potatoes, mute fruit, corn, whatever you can get to grow. Sturgis. Well, this place is starting to feel like home. Now that we can grow our own food, I think we can really make a go with this. Trouble is... The more we establish ourselves here, the more of a target we become. What we need is to get some defenses set up. Then maybe Preston will be able to relax a little bit. What sort of defenses did you have in mind? Walls, sandbags, turrets, whatever you can put together. Hey, Sturgis. Thanks for doing that. We'll all sleep better at night knowing we have some defenses set up. It's been a long road. But yeah, I think this is it. Home. Feels good. What next? Well, I guess figuring out how to get back to living instead of just surviving. Of course, you know you're welcome anytime. My door's always open to you. Windows, too. Some of the walls actually come to think of it. I guess I better get back to it. Take care now. I always hated that little bit of dialogue, like, you're always welcome here. Like, bro, I built this place. Before you even arrived, I built this place. It's not for you to be like, you're welcome here. Like, I can say you're welcome here, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I do have a mod installed. 
uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's something about um, uh, settler uh, dialogue. And one of the things it does is it watches to see how far you've progressed in the story and watches to see if you've properly managed the settlement and you've given them like the food, water, defenses, all the stuff they need. And over the course of time, it tries to remove some of the weird dialogue that uh, the NPCs can say. In the base game, you could be level 150. You could have been the greatest defender of the settlements to ever walk the Commonwealth. You could have made like entire communities that are just amazing, uh, you know, pushing the limits of the engine as far as it can go. And the settlers will still talk to you like you're a stranger. They'll be like, whoa, I hope you're not here to kill me. And it's like, bro, I've been building defenses to save your lives and make this a good community for years. So you can be quiet about the I hope you're not here to kill me stuff. Um, and uh, and so so there's this mod I've installed called like S S Settler Dialogue or something. And and it just watches to see how far along you are. And it, it tries to get rid of any of that really weird dialogue that doesn't quite doesn't quite match the reality of what you're doing in the Commonwealth. And it makes it a little more tolerable, a little better. I know I'm not the only person here who's lost someone. I just, I miss him so much. And, um, and so I, I do, I do like that mod. It does seem to make the game a little better. It, at least you don't feel like you're, like you're a stranger in your own communities. And that's nice. Um, oh my gosh, is it 7 PM when I'm starting this? That's right. We're going to run, grab loot, and get back. Hopefully we get back before midnight. I don't know if we can do that, but we're going to try. Um, some of you who are playing the regular version of the game might say, why are you actually walking there? Just quick, just use quick transport or whatever it's called. I don't even remem remember the name of what it's called because I haven't used it in years. Um, I can't use the quick blah blah, quick travel, um, because uh, in survival mode you have to actually walk everywhere you want to go, or run everywhere you want to go, or catch a verdi bird to wherever you want to go. Um, in this game I should also be able to create a motorcycle to wherever I go. Not yet, because I don't think I've put that mod in, but there is a mod that will present to you a, a motorcycle. It takes a lot of resources to build it, but once you have the resources, uh, you can basically revitalize one of the motorcycles and use that to ride around the Commonwealth. Um, so, you know, I don't think that I've gone down here yet. If you remember, we were looking through our scope uh, during the fight with Preston as we fought a giant Deathclaw. And he, the Deathclaw, like, while we were looking on the scope, he banged out of this location and come up, came up out of the ground and started taking out raiders left and right. It's actually kind of funny. In fact, now that I think about it, if you remember, he threw a raider into the air way over here. I wonder if that raider's still on the ground somewhere. That would be kind of amazing if we could loot the body of the raider that got hurled into the air. <laughs> I don't think we can. I don't think he's around. Uh, yeah, I don't see him. I guess his body could still be on a rooftop somewhere. Um, I can see that there are some bodies still around, like right over here, there was a body that I saw. Yeah. So the, the game engine is keeping some of the bodies around. Usually it cleans up the bodies after a while if they've been fully looted, they disappear off of the map, but, um... Hey, there's one that I didn't, I didn't pillage. I'm carrying too much. Oh no. That should be okay, because I believe that I have been storing loot right here. Yep, look at that. Let's dump a ton of junk into here. Oh no, what did I just get rid of? My road leathers. Okay, suddenly I'm naked. And it looks like I forgot to re-equip my right leg. I think I took that off accidentally in a previous game, just like I did with the road leathers just now. I think I, like, accidentally transferred the right leg into the... into the other side, into the container. And then transferred it back, but never re-equipped it. I have 
three cores and they're actually usable. That's amazing. All right. Well, we can leave that there for now. Let's re-equip our gear. There we are. Am I? I do have my light on. Okay. I was uh, I was talking to a guy on Reddit. This uh, this poor guy. He uh, he played Fallout Four back when it came out uh, years and years ago. And then just in the last few days, he decided to start that thing back up and have another playthrough. And he was relying on the knowledge he had of Fallout 4 from like six years ago. And, uh, and he, he didn't remember very much about the game or how to play, how to play well. Um, so he wasn't having a great playthrough. Um... But he knew it should have been better. Like, intellectually, he knew, like, he should be doing better, but he, he wasn't. And one of the questions that he asked on Reddit was something like, um, aren't we supposed to get something better than 38 bullets, like, and, and little, like, pipe rifles and pipe pistols? Uh, because he could, re he could remember that there definitely were better options, but he, did, he didn't have them. And, uh, I'll take that, thanks. And... We were like, yeah, there was, uh, th there was at least one 10 millimeter pistol, maybe two or three in the vault as you're, as you're leaving the vault, you should have walked away with a, at least one 10 millimeter. He didn't have any 10 millimeters. He didn't have any 10 millimeter bullets. He had nothing. And I had the nice, the, the good fortune of having played this on video. I actually was able to go back and look at my video footage and be like 117 bullets. That's, that's what I had when I left at 117 10 millimeter bullets when I left the, the vault. So you definitely should have uh, at least a 10 millimeter with a lot of ammo. Um, to be fair, I don't know what the ammo situation is like if, you, uh, if you're not playing survival mode. Survival mode, creatures die faster, but you also die faster. So I don't know, you know. Um, maybe if you're in, like, normal mode, you, you would have far fewer bullets, because the enemies can soak bullets, so you just fill them up with lead. I don't know. Okay. Great. You know what, let's just check. Isn't there like a duffel bag here? Let me just make sure. Oh, I didn't get all that. 45 bullets. Okay, okay. Well, she's been totally taking all of her gear from her. And these guys have had all their gear taken. I'll take that gold watch. I'm going to slow down here in a second. I can feel it. Picking up too much loot, and all I had was about 10 pounds of leeway. If I'm not careful, I'm just going to fill right back up. There it is. There it is. All right, I'm going to fast forward, you guys, to me getting up to the armor. Alright, we're in the armor. Now, this is a little bit sucky, because once you're in the armor, you cannot use your wrist Pip-Boy to light things up. So if I press Tab, no light. You have to have the head piece for your power armor in order to turn on a light when you're in power armor. And this dumb power armor doesn't have that. Well, I have no idea how much weight that, that was. In the power armor, I should be able to carry a lot more. Let's see how much. I was at 85 before power armor. 
Now I can do 185. Um, that's great. That's not going to be enough, though, because if you recall, I just was downstairs, down out, out on the street, and I was dumping things into a container down there. So, I have all that stuff to take back to, uh, take back to Sanctuary with me. That is going to take... That's going to take up a little bit of weight that I won't be able to take with me. Doggo! Hey. Come on. Okay. Now, I've mentioned in the past that dog meat has a trick in survival mode, but I think that I've somehow broken the trick. It's not working. Oh, no, it's not working. Shoot. Um, the trick is if you give dog meat only a ban bandana and not goggles, his weight, his carrying capacity, will be the carrying capacity of the normal game, not survival game. Some sort of weird tweak. I don't understand exactly what that is. But so, you know, in normal games, dog meat can carry 125 pounds or units of weight, however they're weighing it. Um, in, uh, in survival, he can only carry 25. Very, very small amount of weight. Probably way more realistic. Um, but there's that little trick where if he only has a bandana, um, do I just want to jump down? I just want to jump down. Dog meat, you find your way down to me, buddy. You can't die from falling damage while you're in power armor. Um, wow, look at that. I just broke out the whole section. No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, anyway, uh, uh. Oh, you did make it down. Good job, buddy. Anyway, dog meat should not be able to carry a lot. But there's a trick to make him carry some in survival mode. And I really wish I could get him to be like that. <laughs> I don't know why he's not working like that anymore. I thought I I thought I understood the bug properly and I for if some of you guys remember one of the earlier videos, I did get it to work. That bug was working at one point. I exploited it, and I did have him carrying just like a boatload of stuff. But for some reason, it's it's not working now. Let's carry right up to my maximum. Oh no, I went over the max. Shoot. There we go. All right, we'll come back for more in a sec. Good. Okay. Doing good. We have now dropped off all of the loot in Red Rocket, which probably I didn't need to do that. I probably could have taken that last load all the way with me to Sanctuary here. Um, cause Sanctuary could use the loot too. Uh, but it's fine. Um, eventually I'll set up a caravan between the two of those. Um, and then they can share resources. But for right now, they don't share resources, and I don't really mind that they don't share resources. We'll figure that out um, as we go. There we go. Always take out your fusion cores, because otherwise the settlers will think they're allowed to use it. Ooh, that is a really beat-up set of armor, isn't it? All right. Well, it's in position. Let's get some sleep. Some days are harder than others. But even the hard days get easier than the one before. Nice job with those defenses. I've got nothing else I need right now. I think Preston may want to chat, though. Bro, you're inside of my chem station. You, you okay? Let's get the chem station out of your way, you guys. <laughs> Look at you sitting there. Um, I know the chem station can't stay here for long. Uh, it's just a temporary place for it. Everything's temporary right now. I'm going to actually fix the place up over time. But, um, 
Oh my gosh, and Marcy, you're right there. I need to put that back against the wall so you won't stand like that. Um, okay, everything's a little bit wonky right now. <laughs> uh, and I know I can't leave that there because eventually Trash Can Carla will show up. And when she shows up, she's going to stand right there. But, um, okay. Uh, goodness gracious. Sometimes it's weird when you're building out a settlement and you start realizing, like, there are all these markers that you can't see that, you know, the developers have sort of hidden them around the place. Like, like we know that there's some kind of invisible marker right here, which will cause Sturgis to stand here and hammer away at the wall. Um, and... There's a bunch of them all over the place, and you start to realize as you build out your settlement that you're starting to memorize where all those locations are so that you can build your settlement without interfering with the NPCs walking around doing their thing. Uh, it's kind of silly. Um, okay, let's pop back into my um, my list of my to-do list because I think we're actually I think we just accomplished something. Go back to the museum. Get the dog and look in the toolbox. We did that. Outside of the museum, get loot from the chess table thing. We did that. Um, okay. So what we have left is a huge pile of safes, but we don't have advanced lock picking. We can't get, get at them. Oh, the mysterious bald guy is not a safe. Let's take him and put him with the other stuff. There we go. Okay. So we've got a pile of safes here that we don't care about. And then we've got four tasks or items that we've learned about, but we are not quite, we weren't able to do anything with them yet. Let's go back into the game and let's drop out of this interface and let's take a look at our quests and see where we're at. I, I'm still kind of excited to be playing right now because like I said, it's been quite a number of days. <laughs> I hope those raiders pay for what they've done. Okay, June, I'll do my best to make them pay. Um, like I said, I'm kind of excited to do what I'm going to do now. I haven't played for a few days, and this is kind of fun. Um, let's see. What do I have? City manager tracking. Uh, this is not a normal, um, quest in the game. This comes with Sim Settlements 1. And basically what it will do is it will pop up markers all over the map. Anywhere that you've had Sim Settlements like auto building homes, it will pop up a marker anytime that home has been upgraded since you last saw it. So that you can basically go around your own little town and inspect like, oh, that house upgraded and it looks nice now or whatever, you know. Um, but I'm not going to turn that on because I, I haven't done literally, I've not done anything with Sim Settlements yet, I believe. Um, Jewel of the Commonwealth, go to Diamond City. Talk to the settlers at Ten Pines. Well, we could talk to the settlers at Ten Pines. This will be scary. I don't believe I have enough. Oh. Oof. I gotta level up. I don't believe I have enough power core power left to power my power armor. Wow, that's a lot of powers. And because I don't think I have enough power, I, I'm not sure I can safely, reliably get to 10 pines. And since this is my, you know, my own limitation is I'm trying to play survival mode in such a way that I never die. And I, and I have died once. So uh, I'd like to never die again. <laughs> um, that may not be possible. I may have to make my way to 10 pines without having the protection of power armor. Uh, which is just yikes. That's scary. But maybe I have to? Well, let me see if I have any extra cores. Do I have anything? Oh, this way. I have a fusion core. Ah, it's at 1%. That's at 31%. Shoot. Okay, uh, we're going to get out of this interface for a quick second. Um, so I looked over what I could do with the guns, and I think 
I want to take gun nut two because I want to make some modifications to this gun and I don't want to have to re-modify the gun in another level or two when I do get gun nut and I, and I want to take it to the next level. I think I would just rather have it modified to be maxed out from the start. Um, which means I need to take gun nut two right now and I do have a level up. Yeah, I think I'm doing- oh, I can't do gun nut two. It needs level 13. I can't get that for a while. Couldn't do it even if I wanted. I could do Rifleman though, it'll give me the, basically the same effect. I wanted to do Gunnut 2 so that I could get better mods to do more damage. But I also have an option right now to do Rifleman, which will give me more damage. Alright, couldn't do Gunnut 2, but I got the next best thing. Alright, let's get in here and see what we can do. Okay, I'm at level 9, no, 10 now, I'm at level 10 now, and my rifle will now do 61 points of damage per shot. Uh, I was, previously, for the Deathclaw fight, I did use this rifle when it was kind of crappy and I hadn't modded it, and it was doing, I think, 30 points of damage, so it's now doing about twice as much. My hope is to stay in stealth, pick off everything before it gets anywhere close to me, and if, if, if I can do that, I don't need a fast firing gun. I need a gun that will do a lot of damage once and take everything out on the first shot. Okay. Time to do scary things. I'm headed directly toward my goal. You can see my, there's a pip toward my goal, due east, at the bottom of the screen. You can see where I'm headed. Um, in the regular game, not only will you get a blue pip at the bottom of the screen to show the, the target you're headed toward, you know, where you want to go, but you'll also get little red pips to show the enemies that are within range. You don't get that in survival. I really don't have any idea what's out there. Um... But it's probably not going to be easy. Let's save. And go. There's my nemesis. My one death in the game so far. I knew I would die. <gasps> There's a person walking around. That's a raider. Shoot, I missed. Good. All right, well, the gun is holding true to my hopes. Single hit and somebody goes down. Ah, oh, shoot. Good. Nope, you're behind a tree. Oh, there you go. Good. Good. Okay. It's possible, because this uh, engine is right behind me, it's possible that that is the fight that killed me just now. But I have this much upgraded gun, and I think I've just dramatically changed the outcome. I think the fight that killed me a couple levels ago, I think I just won. Okay, I got the dog. There should be three people here. One. Someone was hiding behind a tree. Two. Three.
All right, we're gonna. What? We're gonna immediately go back and drop off all of this loot, and I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if uh, if there's anything else I can drop off too, because I got filled up really quickly there. Maybe there's something I can do. I survived the fight. I'm going to fill the workbench up with all the goodies that I got and then head back out on the mission. And I'll put that mission into a separate video. So I'll see you guys for the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks.